Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So with Intel about to announce their most advanced mainstream CPUs of all time, today we're actually gonna take a look at the three key factors that actually show that Intel's in some serious trouble. So go ahead, stick around, and check it out. All the way back in January 2007, our good friend Steve Walton did a review on the Intel Core 2 Quad Q6600. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because it's actually kind of interesting how this review starts. Hot on the heels of the Core 2 Duo launch, Intel came out and released the world's first quad-core CPU processor last November. Key words there were, world's first. As we discovered back then, given the right conditions, the quad-core version can outperform the Core 2 Duo with ease. While current software is still trying to play catch-up, well, I added the play in there, but let's face it, that's what he meant, with the dual-core technology, not even the quad-core, we find a number of powerful applications that, in fact, saw some benefit from having four dedicated cores at their disposal. Now, doesn't this sound oddly familiar today? Back then, software was having trouble using dual-core CPUs, and Intel was coming out with quad-cores. And ultimately, what this comes down to is market leadership. And this is something that Intel has not done pretty much since. I waited with bated breath when Haswell was announced, as I was sure they were going to go ahead and give us at least 6 cores and 12 threads with this CPU lineup, and hopefully 8 cores and 16 threads, as it had already been six years since the launch of their quad core but i was sadly mistaken and that was not the case two years later with skylake i knew i felt it in my bones i'm like they have to go ahead and up the core count they have to remain market dominant well i was completely wrong in that and two years later we're still on quad cores two years later with kb lake same thing and then finally in late 2017 about 11 years later, Intel finally brought out a six-core mainstream CPU for the masses. Now, this does not inspire confidence when it comes to market leadership. Now, while the 8700K did prove to be a very good CPU and still is a very good CPU today, relative to its competition, it took 11 years to get to this point. Now, let's talk about why these CPU cores actually matter. Putting things in perspective, the Ryzen 7 1800X launch really put things in that perspective for us. Taking a look at Cinebench R15 here, we can see that we have market dominance with even HEDT CPUs competing against it. And this is a mainstream CPU right here. Now if you look at the i7-7700K, it was an absolute massacre. And this is all the while the 7700K did have a very strong single thread performance. It was actually outperforming by almost 33%, but it doesn't really matter in the applications that will take advantage of that. And much like back in the Core 2 Duo days, this is the number that will matter in the future. This number will matter much, much less. And that's the reason why the 7700K was simply destroyed overall at this particular point in time, and Intel had to rush out something else that would be far more competitive. Going over to the 8700K review, we can see that this is a much more competitive landscape. Much higher single thread performance, a little bit behind on multi-thread, but overall a pretty balanced showing from Blue Team. Now, I'm not going over the numbers here, that's not what's important. The fact is, this CPU came out first, this one came out ahead of schedule. We all know that Intel wanted to launch the 8000 series in early 2018, but were forced to bring it out in late 2017 because of how competitive Ryzen CPUs are. Now, that's not news, everybody knows that, but the big thing there is that is not the position of a market leader. Market leaders do not follow. They go ahead and innovate and bring things to market first. They lead. This is something that Intel no longer is doing. And while everybody's getting jonesed up for the new 9th generation core series, they are finally bringing an 8 core 16 thread CPU to the market. It didn't take 11 years for this to happen, it only took one. 
But the reason for that is, is because they're playing reactionary. This is not market leadership. This is because of the fact that they absolutely have to, to be competitive with their competition. And realistically, the i9-9900K is probably going to be Intel's last hurrah for a good long while. Now, once again, this isn't news. Everybody knows about this at this point, but Intel's 10 nanometer process simply is not working the way that it's supposed to. This was supposed to be out years ago, and I think this was even supposed to be used in Skylake at that particular point in time, Skylake or KB Lake, but this has been supposed to have been out a long time ago, and it still doesn't work here today. And I saw this article just the other day, and... I never thought I would see the day that this would even be a possibility, but it actually makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Chances of Intel going fabless higher than ever. Now, for those of you that don't know what a fabless company is, here's a picture of Intel's fab. Basically, this is where they build their processors. They manufacture them themselves. Now, companies like AMD and NVIDIA are fabless companies because they don't own their own manufacturing plants. They contract other people out to go ahead and make their chips for them. They just design them. Now, this is huge because CPU manufacturing or any sort of technological manufacturing is extremely expensive and extremely competitive. Now, the big thing here is this could help Intel cut its losses by not having to have all that expensive overhead but at the same time, they will also lose profit margin because they have to pay somebody to build these. But at the end of the day, realistically speaking, because they're falling so far behind, their 10 nanometer process isn't even close to being consumer ready or competitive with their competitors out there. It would actually make sense for them to go with somebody like Global Foundries or TSMC to actually build their CPUs because it seems unlikely they will be able to catch up in time and highly unlikely that they'd be able to surpass either of these companies in manufacturing in the future, which is the only reason why that they would want to go ahead and keep their fabs is if they could somehow gain an edge technologically. Now, what's really important to know about this is if they are going to go ahead and use somebody like TSMC or Global Foundries, that means at no time will they ever have a technological advantage over their competitor AMD. They will always be on an even playing field and will have to compete architecturally and basically just put out better products. Now that Ryzen's been out for a little while, it's becoming very clear that Intel's technological deficiencies are really in their scalability. Realistically, AMD has a far more advanced process procedure than anything that Intel can produce. Intel may be able to produce faster processors, and AMD can produce better and larger processors. More cores, more horsepower, and will always be able to win with the higher core count CPUs in applications that can take advantage of that at much, much lower costs. We're seeing this with the new second gen Ryzen Threadrippers that are coming out. 32 cores, 64 threads on a 12 nanometer process. And for AMD, this is not a hard sell for them. All it is is four Ryzen die that they're currently selling in droves. And they just link them together because they have the technological advantage that Intel certainly does not. And as much as Intel would like to joke around saying that AMD's Epic processors are just glued together, unfortunately for them, that glued together technology is vastly superior to anything that they have. So they are not the technological leader in the market anymore. They are playing catch up as AMD's technology is now flexing its muscle because it's overall a much better way of doing things. To go ahead and put things in perspective, a Ryzen 7 2700X is coming in at 213 millimeters squared. So the Threadripper CPUs are just four of these put onto a single package. So it's only a 213 millimeter square die times four. And this is competing against Intel's 698 millimeter squared 28 core CPU, which will be coming out later on this year. Now these CPUs are massive and simply put, even though there's technically more die on the AMD Ryzen or Threadripper CPUs, this is infinitely more expensive to make 
and produce than four 218 millimeter squared CPUs. So simply put, their technology can never compete in price. And as far as performance goes, that's something that Zen 2 may change as well. If we take a quick look at the Ryzen 7 2700X review, by the way, links for all of these will be in the description below. We can see here that the 8700K has a single thread performance of 198 versus the Ryzen 7 2700X at 176. Now, if we do ourselves a little bit of math here, 176 divided by 198, that's about 11% slower than the 8700K in single thread. Now, we already know that the Ryzen 2700X, which is just a refresh, it's Zen Plus, it's not even a whole new full refresh lineup, got 5% IPC gains and about a 10% boost to clocks. Now, we're getting a full node change to Zen 2 down to 7 nanometers, and AMD is also claiming very high IPC increases on Zen 2 compared to Zen 1 and likely Zen Plus, is it unreasonable to believe that we would get another, at least another 5% IPC gain and then another 10%-ish increase in clock speeds? So that would be overall approximately a 15% increase here. So at the very least, we can say that it would be likely competitive with the current Intel CPU lineup as we know that Whiskey Lake is just refreshed Coffee Lake. It is not going to have any IPC improvements. This has already been discussed before. So basically, Intel is going to be losing their only real advantage. They cannot manufacture as cheaply or efficiently, and they won't have any ground to stand on. And it all stems from, and plain and simple, it all stems from a lack of market leadership. Something that they had a little bit over 10 years ago, 11, 12 years ago, they were definitely market dominant. Today, they are just simply not the same company. Now, I know I'm coming down hard on Intel in this video, but I want you guys to know out there, I'm not shilling for anybody here. I'm just explaining the situation here because let's face it, AMD is going to be infinitely more competitive next year, and that's great. They need some wins. They need to get their market share up, get some more R&D money, and stay competitive. So that's really good for them. But let's be realistic. We don't want AMD taking over the market either. We don't want either of these companies taking over a lion's share of the market. We want competition, and I want to see Intel compete and innovate, but realistically speaking, without some sort of scalable CPU architecture, they're not gonna be competitive. It's just not going to happen. That's really the first thing that they need to work on, and I think they realize that at this point, and that's probably what they're working on. Second thing that they really need to do is try to actually compete core to core. Now, they're starting to do that with the 9900K, and that's great, and we're glad that that's going to happen. But with AMD's Epic Rome, which is the Zen 2 version of Epic, likely coming in at 64 cores and 128 threads, that means AMD will be packing twice the cores and twice the threads on their current die. And if they stick with their current plan of the dual CCX die at somewhere around 213 millimeters squared, that means that the mainstream CPUs can go as high as 16 cores and 32 threads. Now, will that happen? I'm not sure. They may want to scale it back and just use defective die and do 12 cores and 24 threads, as honestly, for mainstream, that's probably going to be more than enough for most users. But if they wanted to, at any time, they could drop that hammer. And that's what happens when you're in a market leadership position. Realistically speaking, Intel is now in the backseat. They might be selling more processors. That's good for them. That's marketing. That's because they were the market leader for so long. That's one of the perks. You know, people will give you time. But realistically speaking, technologically, they're actually one or two steps behind AMD at this point. And that's pretty crazy when you think about it. And they're almost to the point of thinking about ditching most of their fabrication and just contracting that out. And like I said, honestly, I never thought I would see them even consider that. Never figured we would be at this particular point. But realistically, it makes a lot of sense for them because they can cut a lot of costs, billions of dollars a year in expenses that they don't need to deal with anymore and just pay somebody else a little bit of money to go ahead and manufacture them. You know, profit margins go down a little bit. Uh, so honestly, I think that that would be a smart idea for them 
as a company because this way they would also have the top tier best technologies available as well so for example next year if intel decided you know a year or two ago that they wanted to go fabulous they too could then have a seven nanometer product which would be far more competitive with amd's zen 2. but as it stands since they didn't think that far ahead and they didn't realize that amd would be as strong and competitive as they are they're going to be behind next year for the majority of it unless they can get their 10 nanometer process fixed towards the end of next year which is kind of what they're hoping for even then i think it's gonna be too late because we're already gonna have seven nanometer products from amd for a very long time and that really just shows how good and how strong zen really is is that it's taken amd from being the budget brand the company that can't compete to being market dominant and like I said, it's twofold. It's not just AMD doing it. It's the lacquer fabrication on Intel's side and the other fabs actually superseding them. So that's one failing from Intel. And the second one was the Infinity Fabric, the scalable architecture from AMD that Intel simply cannot compete with. Well, alrighty guys, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Did you ever think you'd see the day where Intel was literally second tier? Now, I know a lot of you guys are gonna be going, well, they're better at gaming yes they're going to be better at gaming unfortunately gaming doesn't really matter to these companies it's a very low margin low volume sales department realistically speaking servers are what's important and this is the reason why amd does what they do the best die those 218 millimeter die that they make the best ones go to epic the second best go to threadripper and then the worst go to mainstream platforms and that's just simply how it works because that's the priority. Now, granted, Intel, the 9900K, it's gonna be a fantastic CPU. I can tell you this right now. I mean, it's basically just Coffee Lake with two more cores. Realistically, for all users out there, if you're a gamer, it's gonna work for you for a very, very long time. For example, it took the Intel Q6600 forever to become obsolete and fully utilized. And that's honestly how I feel the 9900K is really going to go down in history. It's gonna be the first of its kind. It's going to last a very long time. And it may even end up being the uh, i7 9700K. Sorry, it's so close to the 8700K, I wanted to call it that. Uh, the eight core, eight thread CPU may actually go down in history as the better buy of the two. We'll have to wait and see, but either way, eight cores and eight threads is gonna hold off for a pretty long time. And eight cores and 16 threads, as far as gaming and normal day-to-day -day usage goes, like I said, much like the Q6600, is going to last you a very long time. So the point of this video isn't just to bash on Intel, it's to go ahead and point out the fact that they are no longer market dominant and the fact that they just need to work on that. They need to get things fixed. It looks like that they're working on some stuff and the fact that they are still putting out good products, but let's be realistic here. If you want the best of the best, it's not gonna be Intel for too much longer. Lordy guys, that's all I have for today. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. That really helps me out. If you want to help out the channel, please consider becoming a patron over on Patreon. If you like videos uh, where we have tech on hands, like the IPC test, GPC test, and in the future, we're going to start doing uh, 3D mark benchmarking, things like that. It's going to be a lot of fun. So if you're interested, go ahead and click the link in the description below. As little as a dollar a month really helps me get stuff on hand. So this way we can actually test stuff for ourselves well i want to thank you guys hope everybody has a great day and i will catch you guys in the next video